Another commonly used cot in Western Australia is the GE Panda Warmer. Uh, and it's, you can see it's a slightly different shape. In preparation for uh, a resuscitation or a birth, of course, we have to undergo our five moments of hand hygiene. Uh, in continuation of our preparation for resuscitation, we need to make sure our equipment is on. We turn it on at the wall. A second uh, switch is at the back of the cot, just here. And our third switch controls the onboard computer. You'll notice that the light immediately came on. So while the uh, computer is going through its checks, we can check that our light can dim, which is perfect. It goes down and can go quite bright. And we can also make sure that the directional light, which we use for procedures, uh, works as well. So that's really nice if you want to put a, a line in or something like that. Um, you can direct it exactly in the right spot. Okay, once the um, warmer has gone through its own checks, you'll see this initial screening that says warmer, and you've got the heater output going to uh, 100%. It's in warm-up mode. Um, and you'll see admit baby flashing, and up in the right-hand corner, we've got the APGAR on-off button. Once the baby's body is born, or on the wards when the baby's body reaches the, um, the warmer, we will turn on the APGAR clock. Uh, at the moment, we're not at seven minutes, so it's still warming up. By turning on the APGAR clock, you can see the uh, display here on, on the screen. Uh, it immediately turns the heater output to 100%. Now, this warmer gets very, very warm, and it can be too warm for the baby. So use your judgment, and maybe after about five minutes, um, have someone just turn the heater output down. Okay, because otherwise the baby will overheat and that's uh, equally a problem. The final things that are relevant on this screen are the oxygen saturation. And this uh, brand of, of COT actually has an inbuilt oxygen saturation uh, probe. So you've, you've got it here and when you're ready to use it, you can turn it on. We'll just turn it off for the moment. The other buttons will uh, have trends and uh, you can set up your oxygen saturation as well. Um, you'll notice when you turn it on it has an inbuilt scale but during a resuscitation it's not the time to be weighing your baby. The T-piece ventilator is gas dependent so we need to turn the oxygen on which is at the back of the column. This we're very fortunate, is uh, visible at the front. We can see the level of the oxygen um, cylinders, and that's certainly more than three quarters full, so we're happy with that. And the air is more than three quarters full, so we're happy with that as well. The first part that we will check is the suction, so above, above the dial. We turn the suction on by uh, switching the toggle switch on. And we'll occlude the tubing. We'll then use the suction dial and rotate it clockwise to um, adjust the pressure to what we require. So uh, a small baby, say less than 1,500 grams, wouldn't require much more than 80 millimeters of mercury. And you can see 80 millimeters here. And our larger baby, no more than 100 millimeters of mercury, which is here. We leave that um, on and then turn the toggle switch off. It will remember our settings. So we turn it off so that we don't use too much gas during the resuscitation. Um, and it, all it requires is us to flick the lever and we're ready to go. Now we're down below the gray line. We're actually on the ventilation component. This side here 
um, is related to, so this little bit here, is related to the gas supply to our bag and mask. But first up, we're going to check the uh, settings for the T-piece itself. So we need to turn the toggle switch on. We take the T-piece, you include the uh, ventilation outlet, and you include the peep bulb. Um, so if put my thumb over there. Uh, it'll come with a little cap on it, so you don't actually have to hold it like that. Our oxygen setting will be 30% in keeping with the WA addendum. And then we need to um, increase the flow uh, from zero up to eight litres again. This is indicates here, look at the manometer, look at the flow. So we've got a flow of eight litres. Um, nothing's moved yet, but what we've got to do now is use this PIP dial, so the inspiratory dial, turn it clockwise till we achieve the pressures which are visible on the manometer um, for our particular baby. So I'm going to turn it up slowly. Now we've got 25 centimeters of water for a baby who is 33 uh, completed weeks or less. If I turn it up a bit more, I've got 30 centimeters of water for a baby who's 34 weeks or more. If I do require uh, a greater uh, amount of pressure, I need to continue to turn the PIP uh, dial in a clockwise dire direction, but I'm going to need to uh, depress the yellow pressure uh, lever. And this will go past it, and you can see there I'm getting more pressures. And this one will only go up to 45 uh, centimeters of water, but that's a factory setting and I can't actually adjust it any further. To decrease the pressure, all I need to turn now is it, it, the dial in an anti-clockwise direction. I don't have to press, uh, depress that lever again. You hear the click and it's back to 30 centimeters of water. At the moment, if you look at the manometer, it's on zero. But if we turn it um, in a clockwise direction towards the positive, like turning it up, and you watch the dial, and you can see it um, turning up or turning back down again. And we are now on five centimeters of water, which is what the WA addendum says. And then we just want to verify our settings. We occlude the uh, tipis and release, and occlude and release a few times, and then we're happy that our setting is correct. If the birth is not imminent, uh, we should turn off the gases to conserve them. We'll turn off the flow and turn off the toggle switch, and everything's gone back to zero, and that will conserve our gases uh, for uh, the resuscitation.